When it comes to China, this country seems so distant, so far from Ukraine, in terms of traditions, distance and mentality. But in fact, the history of Ukrainian Chinese relations goes far back in the past. Ancestors of Ukrainians interacted with China back in ancient times, in the framework of trade relations in Eurasia. The famous Silk Road connected China and Europe and it went through Kyiv and ancient Slavic lands. Apparently, merchants from Russian lands visited the markets in the east, and eastern merchants traded on markets in Kyiv. We can say that today archaeologists find Chinese artifacts in the cultural layers of the times of Kyiv and Rus. The first written mention of the country Rosh, which was the name for ancient Rus in the Middle Kingdom, can be found in Chinese chronicles of the mid-13th century. In the middle of the 13th century in China, which at the time was captured by the Mongols, the Mongol dynasty Kublai Khan ruled. It is mentioned that his guards were recruited entirely from the country Rosh. It seems obvious that our land was the supplier of staff for the Chinese emperor. In the 14th century in China, the number of prisoners brought from the West had significantly increased. Monarchs of the Yuan dynasty used prisoners for the defense and construction, and some of them were engaged in agriculture. Russian prisoners even made up a special regiment in Beijing, which in 1331 consisted of 600 fighters. The history of the Yuan dynasty says that another 2,700 Russians were delivered to Beijing in 1332, and they were formed into a few new regiments. The long pause in bilateral relations between China and Ukraine can be explained by the complexity of the situations, both in China and on the territory of ancient Ukraine. The Silk Road was destroyed and became totally useless. Soon in Europe the secrets of the Chinese craftsmen were learned, and there in Europe they started to produce silk, gunpowder, and later China. It was unprofitable to continue trading with Europe, as the way to the market was too long and it required a lot of resources, and the return was not high. At the beginning of the 14th century the plague epidemics began, which definitely made the route dangerous. So it came to its demise. The Chinese economy gradually began to decline. Since the beginning of the 17th century, the state was governed by the Manchu rulers, who led the country to a number of acute crises. Only at the beginning of the 19th century did Ukraine once again begin exploring China as a country. In 1784, a collection of documents titled Diplomatic Collection of Affairs between the Russian and Chinese states from 1619 to 1792, which was concluded by the outstanding Ukrainian historian and geographer Mykola batish Komensky, was published. In 1824, the book by Ukrainian traveler Yegor Timkovsky, Journey to China through Mongolia in 1820 and 1821, was published. At the same time, Ivan Korostovets, a landowner from Chernihiv, was appointed the imperial ambassador in Beijing. Ivan Korostovets wrote several articles about China, a native of Kyiv and a graduate of the Kyiv Theological Academy and later the Medical Surgical Academy, named Joseph Witsakhovsky was a physician from 1819 to 1831 and the Russian spiritual mission in Beijing. In the midst of a cholera epidemic, he cured hundreds of Chinese, for which he was honored by his grateful patients with a monument in Beijing. The construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway started in the 1880s. A lot of Ukrainians who found themselves landless and without any means of support as a result of the reforms of Tsar Alexander II were called back to work. The construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, which went through China, was extremely harsh. Those Ukrainians that survived in the difficult circumstances stayed behind mainly in Manchuria, where in 1898 the city of Harbin was built. The founder of Harbin is considered to be the engineer Svyagin, who was born in Crimea and had great possessions there. Modern-day Harbin is still distinguished by the buildings in the central part of the city, which are reminiscent of ancient Ukrainian merchant cities. Ukrainian life began to emerge in the Far East in and around Harbin. A Ukrainian club was opened in the city in 1907, and the Ukrainian National House was opened there in 1918. A mutual fund, a school and a church were an active part of the club. The first translations of the poems of Taras Shevchenko in the Chinese language, as well as materials about his life and works, appeared in 1912. In 1917, there were 50 children studying in the school. During the revolution of 1917-1921, a lot of immigrants moved to Harbin. The consulate of the Ukrainian People's Republic was based there. It was headed by a native of the Poltova Oblast, Pyotr Twardovsky. 
1921, the poems of Ivan Franko and Lesia Ukrainka were published in the Chinese translation. There were two acting Ukrainian Orthodox churches in Harbin. One of them, the St. Mary's Church, is functional there to this time. In 1921, Ukrainian blind poet Vasil Yaroshenko moved to Harbin. There he met a classic of Chinese literature, Lucine, who translated Yaroshenko's work The Dreams of a Spring Night and The Stories of Dried Leaves into Chinese. Lucine said that he decided to do the translation of Yaroshenko's stories because they are permeated with love for China and its people. In February 1922, Yaroshenko received an invitation to become a professor at the Peking University. After the defeat of Kolchak's army, what remained of two Ukrainian regiments that found under Kolchak's control did not want to support the Soviet regime and moved to the territory of China. By the end of the 1920s, there were more than 40,000 Ukrainians living in Harbin. The same number of Ukrainians lived in the rest of the mainland China. By that time, there were several Ukrainian organizations. For example, the Manchu County Council, Education and the Ukrainian Community. There were also Ukrainian newspapers and magazines. In 1932, Japan occupied Manchuria and turned it into a puppet state called Manchukuo. It was governed by Chinese Emperor Puan. Ukrainians immediately declared their loyalty to the new head of Manchukuo. The attitude of the emperor to the Ukrainians was positive. Puan, as a Christian and an educated person, assisted the development of the Ukrainian community in Harbin. The Ukrainian community competed very seriously with the Russian community. If we compare, the Ukrainian community numbered from 30 to 40,000, according to various sources, while the Russian community from 5 to 10,000. Harbin was visited by several Ukrainian politicians, for example, Andrei Lewitsky, president of the UNR exile, and Ivan Kolovalets in the 1930s. The legendary Marshal Fan Yuxiang, who originally was Ukrainian, became an integral part of Chinese history. His real name was Irene Fant, and he was a native of Zakarpattia. In the 1890s, he immigrated to the United States. He was a sailor first, and then he worked as a miner and prospector in Alaska. Irene Fant was hired on warship. During the war between the U.S. and Spain, he received a commission, and then he resigned. And then, when he was trading various Chinese herbs, he met a Christian girl in China, whom he married and moved to live in China where he started to serve Chinese President Yuan Shikai. And accordingly, he took the name Fan Yuxian. He was a military advisor to the Prime Minister, and then he became a marshal and a commander of the North China Army. During the Second World War, he actively helped the guerrilla movement against the Japanese aggressors. After the Second World War, during his visit to the Soviet Union, Venusian died when he was sailing on a ship with his daughter, and near Odessa the ship got on fire. His body was taken from Odessa to Kyiv, where it received great honors, and then it was flown to Beijing, where he was buried. And today he is one of the figures that make up the modern Chinese pantheon. The end of the Second World War, the fall of Manchukuo, the entry of the Soviet troops into Manchuria and then the proclamation of the People's Republic of China in 1949 forced Ukrainians to leave China. Some of them had to move to Taiwan, but the majority of Ukrainians moved to Australia and the Philippines. The new Chinese leadership initially tried to treat the minority with roots in the Soviet Union loyally. But after the deterioration of relations between Mao Zedong and Nikita Khrushchev, Ukrainians suffered persecution and repressions. However, in the 1970s, Chairman Mao changed his tactics and started using Ukrainians for propaganda purposes. The radio station Radio Beijing broadcast in Russian and constantly reported about the situation in Ukraine. In particular, the station concentrated on political and cultural programs. Radio of Beijing paid maximum attention to the works of Ivan Zuba, internationalism or Russification, and constantly emphasized the problems of Ukrainian dissidents. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, China immediately recognized the sovereign rights of Ukraine. On December 25, 1991, Mikhail Gorbachev resigned as president of the Soviet Union, which was considered a non-existent country. 
A day later, on December 27th, the same year, China recognized the independence of Ukraine. On January 4, 1992, diplomatic relations between the two countries were established. After the proclamation of Ukrainian independence, economic and cultural ties between Ukraine and China grew even stronger. Regular exchanges of official visits were taking place at the highest level. In 2002 and 2009, a special meeting was held devoted to cooperation between Ukraine and China in the cultural sphere for the next several years. Chinese motives began to permeate Ukrainian culture. Take the film by Mikhailo Ilyenko Fuzhov, for instance, or a collection of short stories by Ukrainian poet, playwright and translator Oleg Lysheha, titled My Friendly Bai and The Fu Brother. In 2013, China proclaimed a global economic and political program, New Silk Road, one geographical belt and one way. As part of this program, Ukraine and China are to deepen cultural cooperation between the two countries. Due to the cultural diplomacy, in autumn 2016 in Beijing, the Drashevchenko Museum was opened. The museum is based on the campus of the Chinese Academy of Painting and Calligraphy. We respect Drash Shevchenko very much in China. That is why we created a museum in his honor in Beijing. That's because his life and his works are very close to those of some Chinese artists. Many prominent artists from China were born into poor families and went down the thorny path of life. So we decided to open the museum in Beijing to honor Dara Shevchenko. Every year on March 9th we open the updated exhibition. Why this year precisely? Because it is the birthday of Dara Shevchenko. Every year we prepare for the date. The uniqueness of this museum is that it is the world's first museum dedicated to the creative work of Shevchenko, and it was created not by the Ukrainian diaspora, but by the Chinese people. Of course, this is a very good sign showing that China is interested in the Ukrainian identity, its culture and history of the relations between the two countries. This will most likely open up great prospects that will bring Ukraine and China even closer together.